Hello and uh, welcome. It's uh, we are on the hour. It's 6 p.m. in Madrid, and uh, I have no idea what time it is and where you are dialing from. We have a great turnout for this session, and I see that people are still uh, are still connecting. Uh, so um, while we're waiting for everyone, first of all, I want to make sure that everyone can hear me. So if you can hear can hear me, please uh, please type so. Let me know uh, that um, I, you can hear and see me. Okay, fantastic. I I see. <laughs> That's that that that's amazing. That's the power of um, of, of of the collective. So um, it's uh, great to know that um, uh, you are connected. You can see. You can hear me. Uh, welcome to this um, uh, to this session that is called Leading in Complex Times. It's a series that IE University is uh, putting at your disposal in these challenging times. And today we'll be talking about leading teams. And I call the session Making It Personal because you will see how much personality and effective leadership are connected and how by understanding people that you are leading, you can be much more effective. You can be, become great leaders just by listening and connecting at different levels with your people. And while we are waiting for others, let's uh, run a quick uh, a quick poll. I want to understand uh, why you are here. Uh, so uh, and uh, also uh, I want to give credit to the team that is supporting us today. Rocio and Christina are hosting the session. So from uh, time to time I'll be uh, I'll be addressing them. Uh, asking for help. So, Rocio, if you can uh, open the poll, the first poll, uh, why you are here? Uh, and uh, there are three options. So first, well, very instrumental. I want my team to be more effective. I want uh, tools and I want solutions to understand how to make them effective in these times when we can't see each other uh, uh, face to face, uh, the, the work is distributed, uh, the team is dispersed, or uh, second, you want to build a network around the topic. You want to get closer to the thought leaders. You want to share with peers who are in the same situation, or you want to understand the why, the what, and how of leading at a distance. You want to get the conceptual understanding of that. And I understand they'll say, yeah, I'm here for all of those three reasons. Well, make a choice. Like what's, what's, what's your key driver? What's uh, the big why uh, for you being here? And I will give you a couple of uh, moments to uh, to vote. Uh, Rocio, do we have uh, uh, do we have a good number? Uh, can we share, or do we need to wait a little bit longer? Let's wait a bit, as uh, seventy five percent only voted. Seventy five percent. Well, seventy five percent. That's already uh, at at least uh, at a uh, hundred or two because uh, we have a great turnout for today. So let's go. Uh, let's go and um, ahead and share the the results. Okay. Uh, so we see that. Um, the key reason was to understand the why, the what and the how. You want to make sense. You want to connect the dots. Uh, you want to, uh, to understand, okay, what does it mean to lead at a distance? How is it different from leading face-to-face? Uh, -face? Uh, the second most common was making my team more effective in troubled times. So I want to get results. I just want to get this done. And finally, some of you wanted to connect and, uh, and, and share. So these questions were not uh, random. Uh, just bear them in mind. In uh, one, two, three, four slides, uh, you will see how they connect to the content of, um, of our uh, presentation today. So um, let us talk about today. And for some of you, today might look just like this picture. Uh, the, uh, the challenges facing organizations, employees, and communities are unprecedented. The stakes are high and certainty is nowhere to be found. It's like being caught in a sandstorm. You can't see clearly. It's challenging both physically and emotionally. You are exposed to forces stronger than you and you don't know where, when it's going to end. Under such staggering circumstances, it's only natural for leaders to feel unprepared to lead capably, nimbly, and honorably. But it's when your team needs you most. In a crisis, people look to their leader for guidance on how to respond. 
it's likely that they are feeling worry, fear, anxiety, pressure, and stress, and all at the same time. And these feelings completely overwhelm them. And as a result of basically becoming overwhelmed, one can become almost incapacitated. As if the already complex, uncertain, and ambiguous was not enough, uh, COVID-19 emptied the streets around the world. Uh, but with the streets being empty, what has changed when it comes to work being done virtually? Because already we're living in a society that's predominantly the society of knowledge workers. As leaders, we have to manage work processes that we can't see. We don't know uh, what people are working on, be it, be it in a string of code or uh, the next brightest idea or a patent uh, uh, for the next treatment that will save thousands of lives. So you can't see the work uh, that is being done. It's the knowledge economy. And the second point, we already work in a virtual world. So not only we can't see the work, we often don't see the worker. It's about remote work, uh, dispersed work, uh, distributed teams, global teams. So basically what this situation with coronavirus brought to the fore is that the future of the work is already here. So what are the points that we can, uh, uh, we can see? That virtual work is already the new normal for many knowledge workers. And organizations that have embraced digital early on were more prepared to send their employees home and minimize the business disruption. The crises are inevitable and organizations are well advised to be prepared. And we are better equipped for dealing with those crises uh, than we have ever been, uh, having those digital collaborative environments and tools. So me talking to you here, this wasn't possible 15 years ago. And uh, for many organizations, this is very normal and this is natural. So some have managed uh, this transition better than others. But before we go to the topic on uh, leading virtual workforce effectively, let's take a quick detour to the Stone Age. And I know this will sound uh, funny, but bear with me for a moment. So what has a million years of human experience uh, provided us with in terms of insights for understanding human nature. And uh, this is a webinar largely around human nature. So a study of human origins suggests three important generalizations. First, people live in groups. And because they live in groups, they're inherently social and at a deep, often unconscious level, need companionship and social acceptance. And we dread rejection and isolation. Second, every human group has a status hierarchy. And it suggests that at a deep and often unconscious level, people need status because status permits better choices in mates, food, and living circumstances. And we fear the loss of status. And third, an anthropology will tell us that, for instance, religion is an ancient practice and a cultural universal. So people need predictability. We need predictability to understand how the world works and uh, our place in it. And we fear uncertainty of chaos. So, and this need for predictability leads to religion, culture, technology, books, and uh, obviously it's significant evolutionary. Okay, so we live in groups, every group has a hierarchy, and every person in the group needs to understand their world and make sense uh, out of everything that is happening. So here are th these three fundamental needs that are universal and that are true for everyone in any country, and, and in Germany, in Paraguay, in Canada, in France, uh, for person at every level, every gender, every uh, 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 and anything. So there are three, need for attention and approval, need for status and power, and need for predictability and order. And we can call them getting along, getting ahead, and finding meanings. These are the fundamental and universal themes in human affairs. And over time, people with more social support, with more status, 
and more control in their lives had an advantage. And best leaders help their teams and others satisfy those basic needs, no matter what and uh, in every circumstances. So uh, the, the, in this webinar, I will share with you the research and experience on how you as leaders very practically can help your team members to get along, to get ahead and to find meaning. And before that, let me share with you a recent example of a great leader who has been able to tap into these three basic needs leading a very serious crisis. And many of you would recognize this picture and the man in the picture. His name is Gennaro Arma, and uh, the passengers on the cruise ship uh, used to refer to him as Captain Courageous. And of course, I'm talking about the Diamond Princess cruise ship that was uh, quarantined with more than 700 passengers uh, diagnosed with COVID-19. Many, uh, it, it may have been just traveling to hell and back, becoming a floating coronavirus infected prison for passengers, quarantined at a port in Japan. And uh, many passengers uh, uh, had to stay in that qu quarantine in their cabins that didn't have windows. Uh, Captain Courageous led the passengers and the crew through this crisis. He was the last person uh, to step onto the dry land and he looked entirely unruffled by the experience. And you would say that he didn't lead a virtual team. Well, those 700 infected passengers couldn't leave their cabins. He had to keep them informed, motivated and compliant via radio, internet and notes being pushed under the door no physical contact. How did he do that? So he was uh, credited for preventing panic with his calm and reassuring leadership style. So providing the certainty, provi uh, providing the meaning to the, uh, to the people. His support for his crew was on display right to the end when he disembarked um, uh, the ship, having overseen the full transfer of all passengers either to a hospital or to a quarantine facility. He called them my gladiators. So a very concrete example of elevating the status of people who helped him uh, through this situation. And uh, in that uh, crisis, he also regularly thanked all the passengers and the crew for their uh, patience and perseverance, leaving them notes of encouragement. So clearly uh, getting attention. Uh, giving attention to them, making sure that he satisfies their get along orientation. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, he was able to lead uh, the, the, the whole ship uh, with nearly 4,000 passengers, 700 of whom were infected with COVID-19 um, uh, calmly, and uh, it all got resolved well because he was able to tap into those motivations and uh, make sure that his crew did the best, the passengers were compliant and they uh, were well informed and, and motivated to, uh, to play along because he was able to satisfy their get along, get ahead and try and meaning uh, needs. Um, as a result, he received Italy's highest honor, the order of, uh, of merit. So what needs to happen uh, to make sure that you as a leader uh, can uh, um, tap into those motivations and make sure that uh, you are satisfying them for each and every one of your team members. What exactly, uh, uh, what, what, what does it mean exactly? Um, well, first it means that you need to understand that the context has shifted. When you move from physical to virtual, uh, the underpinnings of those needs are being lost. For example, uh, for getting along, people all of a sudden don't know whom to trust. Uh, they might feel lonely and isolated. Uh, they have um, lost the safety net of the social connections. And of course, they're concerned for family and friends that don't see, they, don't, uh, they can't go and help them out. 
In terms of getting ahead, well, uh, it's very likely that the speed of decision making goes down uh, when the team operates virtually. And uh, it might uh, generate a lot of uh, frustration for people who uh, care about their careers and, and, and getting ahead. And finally, in these situations, it's challenging to find meaning, to make sense. Uh, people lose the sense of control and there is a lot of uncertainty. To help them through, first, you need to, uh, th there must be a mindset shift. So from, the, from being a team lead, you need to become the safe base for your people. And uh, it's, uh, it, it's a theory um, uh, from George Kohlreiser, uh, who teaches at IMD Business School. And he uses this metaphor of uh, uh, rock climbing. And he says that uh, you, uh, as leaders, we must be the safe basis for our employees, those who are climbing the rock. But we are at the bottom and we are providing the support and making sure that they can go and they can experiment. And if, if anything happens, we'll be there for them providing, uh, providing the support. So being a safe base, safe base leadership. In terms of getting ahead, the mindset shift that needs to happen is from being a driver and driving to an outcome, you need to become a traffic controller. You can no longer command and control. Uh, you can no longer micromanage. When you don't see the work, you don't see the worker, um, you need just to direct and provide direction and uh, remove obstacles and make uh, create the environment for your team members to run fast. And finally, finding meaning. Uh, from strategy translator, you need to become a sense maker. Not just uh, cascade what you hear from the top, but connect the dots. Uh, make uh, a sense of what's happening around. Uh, read the weak signals and um, explain it uh, to, to the people uh, that depend on you for that. So make sense for yourself, give it to others. Uh, the question that I know is uh, uh, at the top of your mind is, okay, I, I get it. The context has shifted. I've noticed that a couple of weeks ago. Uh, mindset shift, that's fine, but uh, that might be too theoretical. I understand now I need to be a safe base, traffic controller, sense maker. Okay, what next? Well, next is the behavior. Uh, because uh, you need to do uh, things uh, in, in, in order to impact people. You can't just think yourself uh, into something. You need to act yourself into being the leader that you want to be. So uh, now we'll explore those behaviors uh, that you might experiment with to help your uh, team members to satisfy their fundamental needs for getting along getting ahead and finding meaning. And uh, we'll find with the first one, and that is the getting along uh, motivation, which is satisfying the needs for attention and approval. And each one of us wants uh, to be noticed. Each one of us uh, wants to, uh, to, to, to have that uh, personal connection with the colleagues and particularly with their bosses. But let me start by reflecting on that from, a very, from the opposite view. And that is not being there, being what they call a phantom leader. And actually, you don't need to lead virtually to, to, uh, to be a, a phantom leader. Even during the best of times, uh, there is research that demonstrates that absentee leadership, this phantom leadership, is very common and extremely destructive to teams and organizations. In 2015, uh, they did a survey of 1,000 working adults that showed that eight of the top nine companies about uh, complaints about leaders concerned behaviors that were absent. So employees were most concerned with what their bosses didn't do. So what, who is a phantom leader? It's a leader who displays neither actively positive leadership nor actively negative leadership, sort of being there in the background. Uh, I know that I'm your leader on the uh, org chart, but I don't do anything really with you. Uh, you, you, you go figure it out. And that research showed us that being ignored by one's boss is more alienating than being treated poorly. Just think about it. Not being there for your people is actually worse 
than being there and doing something harmful to them. And uh, this impact of phantom leadership on job satisfaction outlasts the impact of uh, both a destructive and constructive form of leadership. It's, it's, it's super pernicious and it's, and it's pervasive. So uh, be there for your people. Um, be bad at poker. Don't have the poker face. Show your emotions. Show to your employees if you are if if you are happy or sad. Uh, do anything but just uh, anything but uh, being a, a phantom leader. Uh, and uh, I think that the the best um, uh, self test, uh, the litmus test, uh, is asking yourself a question: What does it feel like to work for me? Have you ever paused and have you ever thought, what is it like to work for me? What would, uh, uh, what would your people say? And uh, this is a, a reflective exercise that I often give to, uh, to my students in executive classes. I ask them uh, to write an essay. Uh, what does it feel like to work for me? You will not believe how impactful and how profound uh, that reflection could be. So I encourage you uh, to do that after this, um, uh, after this webinar or over, this, um, over the weekend uh, when you have time. Um, remote doesn't mean disconnected. Uh, so I, I, I saw this, um, uh, this graphic uh, the other day and I thought, wow, this is a fantastic depiction, how people can be uh, further away but still connected. How can we uh, drive unity uh, uh, being at a distance? And I know uh, that uh, the uh, Olympic Games in 2020 are not happening. They've been postponed uh, to 2021, but uh, still, we're all united about the idea. We're all united about uh, the greater purpose, even though we are further apart. So be present and accessible. Schedule regular one-on-ones. Uh, every morning that you come to the office, send a quick text or send a quick uh, uh, jabber or jam, or whatever uh, instant messaging you are using to, to, to your team members and just to signal, I'm here. Uh, we, we, we are connected, we are united, even though we are remote. Uh, find ways to demonstrate empathy. Empathy is a great social connector. Uh, when you uh, talk about things that matter, when you signal to the other person that you hear them, that you understand their concerns, uh, it uh, creates chemicals uh, in our brains uh, that drive satisfaction with life, that uh, lower down the levels of stress, that lower cortisol, uh, just by say, uh, inquiring, how have you been? Uh, tell me about um, uh, your weekend. Um, another thing, uh, connect people with each other. Uh, there is safety in numbers, so uh, foster networks. There is a company in Spain here, and uh, uh, this Saturday, uh, the employees decided to organize a group video call via WhatsApp just to connect on personal issues, like how everyone is doing, uh, what's happening uh, with, with, with the family. And, uh, you know, in, in this tough situation when the country is basically under lockdown, that was uh, hugely motivational for people because uh, they, uh, th there was some real human connection. Uh, so help remote workers to meet each other, set up virtual lunches or tea times. Uh, one company instituted pair calls. So employees opted in and then they were randomly connected with each other to have a conversation with no agenda, just to get to know each other, similar to how you would run into someone at a coffee corner in a physical office. Also uh, being virtual, you need to include intentionally, draw people in. Uh, ask questions uh, like, does it make sense? And be comfortable with the pause. Call people out, uh, say, uh, let's hear from uh, uh, this and uh, so and so. Ask people to use chat. Or at the end of the meeting, ask each participants for their takeaway. And uh, uh, finally, you need to know your team. And uh, here, uh, Rocio, I would like you to draw up uh, the, the, the second poll. And it's the question that you see on the screen. 
um, I have an idea for the perfect birthday gift for each of my team members. Um, yes or no? Let's see. Um, I have an idea for the perfect birthday gift for each of my team members. Yes or no? I will give you a couple of moments to uh, to answer that. And while you're, you're doing so, think about uh, if you lead virtual teams, um, the power of sending something physical to them, even if you don't have to, it might be a small gift or it might be a handwritten note. That makes a huge difference. Okay, let's show up the results. So I have the idea for the perfect birthday gift for each one of my uh, members. Yes, 44%. No, 56%. What does it tell you about your leadership uh, in your team? And um, of, of course, this is a, this is a, a learning event. And uh, uh, I, I know that you've been honest uh, because no one is tracking uh, what, you, what, what you have answered. So more than half of you would, would not know what to give your team members, uh, people who report to you, um, what to give them as a, per, a perfect birthday gift. So it's indicative of at least one thing, well, go and get to know them better. And uh, if you know people better, you can connect better. Now, you don't need to go into our long conversation about the meaning of life with your people. Uh, you, you may just be, um, you, you need to train yourself to be an anthropologist. And anthropologists, they go and observe. They observe and they listen and take notes and they remember small things. So now, uh, everyone is working from home, so people are uh, connecting with their cameras so you can observe their environments. Now, um, what you're seeing here is a virtual background, so it's a picture, it's, it's, it's not a nice office. I wish I would have a nice office like that, but it's not. It's actually just a picture. So if you see my, 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 my hands disappearing, it means that um, uh, it's, 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 all, it's all virtual and uh, there, there, there is a trick there. Uh, but most people will uh, will, will show you their, 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 their bedrooms or, or, or uh, places where they work. So you're able to see, okay, maybe there is an animal or maybe there is a picture, maybe there is a plant, maybe there is a piece of sports equipment. So you can um, uh, talk about those little things, uh, show interest, uh, find things that you, uh, that, that you have in common. And I promise you, your uh, connection and um, your, uh, your link with the person will become much stronger. Okay, uh, so uh, let's, uh, let's move on. And this is the second motivation and that is getting ahead. Uh, getting ahead is about satisfying the need for status and power. Now, we all live in hierarchies and uh, as, uh, as, as humans, we need uh, that status, particularly when uh, we work virtually, when we don't see others. And uh, the first thing that I, I always tell leaders and, um, and, and, and supervisors is celebrating small wins. Uh, so even if they are very little, uh, just say job well done. Uh, have a shout out, shout out to someone, a kind word of appreciation, a, a virtual high five, re remember no touching, and a, a shout out to call out the creative solutions and exemplary behaviors. Uh, enthusiasm can also be contagious. So uh, spread that. And uh, when, when, when you uh, praise someone, you elevate their status. And uh, that's what uh, th that what really works. It satisfies the, uh, the the people's need uh, for for the status. Um, so th there was a question: How is status di uh, power different from recognition and autonomy? Are there differences? Well, recognition uh, automatically elevates status. When I recognize someone, uh, so this per if uh, if I would say, well, uh, this person, that's a fantastic question. I know that this person now. Um, uh, is um, 
uh, is, is, is feeling great because, okay, I would have called out uh, the name and I will say that it's a very insightful, insightful question. Do that in your meetings. Uh, give allocate credit uh, where, uh, where where it belongs, and uh, you will see how it engages people. Just because you are tapping into uh, something that is very uh, important uh, for them personally. Now, also remember, I talked about that mind shift uh, from uh, being a driver to becoming a traffic controller. You know that traffic controllers don't fly planes, but they make sure that they do so safely and well coordinated uh, with others. Uh, and for that, basically what you do, you empower. Uh, you cannot command and control. You need to enable your team to make decisions without approvals. Why? Because your team member might be sitting 4,000 kilometers away from you, so you cannot control every her step. Uh, which means that put the guide rails in place, explain what best looks like, and then step aside and make sure that the teams that can, uh, the, the decisions that can be taken on the ground are being taken there. Create opportunities for others to, uh, to, stay, uh, to step up and uh, make sure that you also provide people to pause, uh, assess the situation, engage with them in that assessment process, uh, ask them for their best thinking, do that coaching in the moment. By doing coaching in the moment, you actually help them to get ahead. Why? Because you're increasing their capability. Yeah? You're increasing their mastery. And uh, that again helps them to get that getting ahead motivation. So set direction, identify priorities, explain the environmental conditions. Uh, so make sure that people are aware of the boundaries that they're working on and uh, encourage entrepreneurship, right? And in entrepreneurship, largely, we can put it in three chunks, innovation, giving voice and taking charge. So provide those opportunities for your people to step up to try out new solutions and raise their hand when things are unclear. I got a question here uh, whether uh, if you praise someone with well done too often uh, for small achievements can be harmful. Uh, practically, uh, I, I've, I've never seen that in my life that someone has overpraised uh, their team. Now, you need to praise people accordingly. When you see a job well done, say well done. Uh, no matter how often that happens, but also if you see that something has not been done, call it out and make sure that you give feedback both on the positive and the negative uh, uh, sides of the um, of, of the equation. So uh, it's 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 very important to uh, to do so. And if anything, from research on feedback, we know that people are not getting enough of it. Uh, so I would rather err. Uh, on the side of overpraising rather, rather than not, uh, not saying anything at all. Um, another uh, characteristic of uh, virtual work has to do with deliberate planning. And for that, I would like to invite you to consider this metaphor. So if you remember before, airlines would charge for check-in luggage and uh, we would travel with things we don't need. Uh, for example, my friend would always pack a hairdryer and I would ask her like, why do you need a hairdryer? Every hotel has one. And she said, well, just in case. Now we are more mindful about what we pack because many travel just with a carry-on. So if we compare check-in luggage with FaceTime and face-to-face -face interaction and the carry-on suitcase with the virtual interaction, uh, then I hope that this metaphor makes sense. When face time is scarce, we must be more deliberate in planning interactions. How do we optimize uh, the, the, the virtual interactions that we have? Uh, their agendas are tighter. Uh, so uh, you need to make sure that we go uh, and, and, and discuss the critical, th uh, critical things in a much shorter time that we have you should uh, require people to come prepared 
right? You need to be deliberate about these virtual interactions. Uh, you can no longer just um, uh, run into someone into corridor. So you need to be very planful for the one-on-one -on -one virtual interactions. So keep lists of things to discuss with them. And of course, meetings are shorter because the attention span in virtual meetings is, uh, is shorter as well. So no scheduling for two hours just in case uh, when one hour is enough. Right? So uh, deliberate planning is very, is, is, is very uh, important. Uh, and uh, another thing that uh, is uh, related to the getting ahead motivation, don't underestimate the power of processes. Set up uh, strong processes in place and because we know that having strong task processes is one of the most significant determinants of team performance. For example, here you see um, uh, the results of this research around 80 teams worldwide uh, with uh, nearly 400 managers uh, who were tracked uh, uh, all, all over a period of time. And you see here on the uh, X axis, uh, there is the measure of dispersion. How dispersed was, was the team from low, like being on the same floor or in the same room to high being on different continents. And of course the team performance. So for teams uh, with strong task processes, even being dispersed, that didn't lead to a drop in performance. However, when the tasks processes were weak, uh, they weren't very well defined. When teams were dispersed, their performance dropped. So routines, uh, uh, make sure that um, people know uh, how to update your spreadsheets uh, using the systems correctly. There is a system, uh, system for check-ins. Uh, don't underestimate the process. Uh, processes uh, provide a lot of um, confidence uh, for people to doing their job well, and uh, they ensure uh, goal, uh, everything from goal setting to uh, KPI tracking and to uh, reward being uh, allocated correctly. And finally, I want to address the point of, well, the, the environment where we work. And I went and I Googled um, working from home and I got these beautiful pictures uh, with very lit offices and uh, the smiling millennials uh, working behind their computers. But uh, we know that in reality, most often working from home looks like this. So as a leader, you need to be very aware that your people uh, may not have very well adapted spaces for virtual work, particularly when they're forced to go home, when they don't have uh, the opportunity to, uh, to go to the office. So what do you need to do? Two things. You need to make sure that there are correct working conditions and that there is appropriate technology. When it comes to working conditions, well, make sure that um, they take care of the ergonomics uh, so that they're not harming their eyesight, that uh, they, they know how to sit well. Uh, make sure that uh, they take regular breaks. Just uh, go and ask them, uh, what's your break schedule? How do you make sure that you're getting lunch in time? Uh, how do you make sure that uh, you have enough uh, time for exercise? Or uh, how, how will I know as your leader that you're standing up each hour and, uh, and doing a little stretch? Uh, go and ask people because I guarantee if you don't do that, then uh, they're really risking their health working those conditions. Remember that there are uh, somebody will be knocking at the door. Uh, there are children playing around. There are pets. People may not have enough office supplies. Uh, it's um, it's 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 messy. It can be it can be messy working from home. So first understanding, be more understanding, be more forgiving, and as a leader, provide those um, uh, things and, um, and the, the nest, uh, cr create the uh, productive environment for, for your people, or at least uh, help, uh, help to. And technology here will be your friend. Uh, luckily, we don't have a scarcity of technology. There is, uh, there, there is a lot, and uh, there is a lot on offer. Uh, learn it yourself know which is which, uh, make sure that uh, there is a tool for telecommunications like instant messaging or texting or Viber or WhatsApp. Uh, uh, remember that uh, the teams are dispersed. 
So uh, it's not only iPhone, not everyone would have an iPhone, um, particularly if we go, uh, for instance, to Asia, uh, that's where Android is more popular versus the US where it's um, I iOS. So be mindful about those differences, make sure that there are collaborative solutions for sharing open docs, uh, Google docs or OneDrive and so on. And also the technology for team decision-making. Uh, something that would enable you to vote on a decision, to do a quick poll, to do a whiteboard, to get a solution very, uh, very quickly. Okay, so uh, that was it about satisfying the get, uh, uh, get ahead motivation, celebrate quick wins, uh, become the traffic controller, remember about uh, de deliberate planning, uh, plan de deliberately, uh, the power of processes, and make sure that people have conducive environment that will enable them to thrive and perform. And finally, uh, defined meaning uh, motivation. Your team members need predictability and order. And today we live in, day, uh, in days where it's uh, really a rare commodity. So being remote, it's easy to panic. You don't know what's going on, and uh, our brain is a machine for creating horror movie scripts. Uh, we always try to think what will go wrong. Now, add external information to the mix. Have you ever thought that social media and news have now been engineered to maximize panic? You know, calm is penalized. If things are calm on, uh, on, on Twitter, comp the advertising companies don't get paid much because there are no clicks. So. Um, and, and the same goes for news. And uh, if your WhatsApp groups are replete with people who spend a lot of time on social media and news sites, you've invited all of those people into your circle as well. So everyone's sharing what's breaking and there is this visceral angst uh, of this very moment over and over. As a leader, you have an opportunity to introduce your more calm into uh in, in in into your teams as a leader you're a dealer in hope so how can you move away from uh contributing to spreading this panic to giving hope and focusing on the future if the leader is calm and sets a path forward people will remain calm and order will be maintained if the leader is panicked and lacks confidence about the actions to take, people will start panicking as well and chaos will ensue. So the key leadership task is to signal safety. And uh, if you read this quote from the Singaporean prime minister uh, from his speech a couple of days ago, that's a great way to signal safety. He said, we don't know where it's gonna end, but this is what we know. And this is what we're going to put in place so that people can, be, can feel safe. And uh, this research goes, um, uh, goes a couple of years back. So Martin Zeligman, who is the father of um, uh, positive psychology, he was studying the safety signal hypothesis. And uh, he said that if some sort of stress is coming through, it does much less damage to people when they know when they're safe versus when they're threatened. So predictability is all about creating realistic expectations. Stay positive. Uh, focus on what we can do now for the better. Underscore realistic uh, reasons for optimism. So this idea of bounded optimism. Even when there is bad news, look for the silver lining. Um, and this isn't a spin. Uh, this is the emotional intelligence to help people through a crisis. Now, um, the, the, the other point of that, and uh, I've, uh, I've alluded to that already, sense making and sense, uh, uh, and sense giving. Uh, a, a friend of mine, um, uh, Drew Watson, uh, he teaches at uh, Said uh, Business School at Oxford. Uh, we had a conversation um, uh, over the email the other day and he brought up uh, the name of um, American sociologist Aaron Antonovsky who wrote about our sense of coherence to explain why some people become ill under stress and others stay healthy. So the sense of coherence is founded on three things. Uh, comprehensibility, can I comprehend all of this? Uh, manageability, is it under my control? Can I manage this? And meaningfulness, 
is there still meaning in what I'm doing? And this is something that uh, should be somewhere in your interactions with team. Uh, always try to make sense for them and give that sense. And feedback, for example, is a great sense giving mechanism. Uh, feed, uh, through feedback, you communicate your assessment of the situation and you communicate your expectations for your people to go forward. So uh, please um, do give more feedback, uh, especially when you don't see your workers, especially when they are far away from you. Uh, that is very important. Uh, the other day uh, I uh, was in, um, uh, in, in, in a webinar with, um, uh, with Michael Chavez, who is the CEO of Duke CE. Uh, Michael and uh, his co-author Sudan Shippel Sule uh, just a couple of weeks ago launched their new, uh, new book, Rehumanizing Leadership. And they say that in the time of crisis, you need to flip the pyramid. What does it mean? When we communicate uh, in the business and when we deal with people, we tend to focus at the bottom of the pyramid. What's our strategy and how do we execute that? So uh, these are our goals and uh, these are our KPI by quarter and uh, that's how we go uh, around our business. And we forget about the purpose and the values and the vision. So we forget why, why do we exist? Uh, what's important, who, we are, who are we as a company and where are we going? Well, in challenging time, in the crisis time, you need to flip the pyramid and it's the purpose, the values, and the vision that really uh, need to be communicated over and over and over again. Um, John Cotter, who did a lot of research on, on change management, uh, he concluded that leaders under-communicate by a factor of 10. So if you think that you are sick and tired of saying the same thing about where we're going and who we are and what's our purpose, well, go repeat it nine more times and then probably you'll get to uh to the right uh to the right ratio and finally you need to provide clarity Elizabeth johnson uh from uh, london london business school um uh, said that if external ambiguity is the new normal internal ambiguity is the, is the new enemy so give clarity to people, share relevant information as simply as honestly as you possibly can. Let people know what you don't know. And uh, it, it tends to be difficult for leaders because leaders think, oh, they won't see me as strong enough. Well, there is strength in admitting that you're not omnipotent and uh, in admitting that you don't know certain things, but then go ahead and figure out and ask questions and bring that information back to you. Uh, uh, to people uh, and uh, open this channel of communication for people. So uh, give people lots of uh, updates. When you update them often, they feel more in control. So you're creating that sense of meaning for them. Uh, don't, uh, don't underestimate that. So let me bring that all together for you. Three basic needs, get along, get ahead, find meaning you need to make the mindset shift. Uh, you need to become the safe base for your people so that you satisfy the get, uh, uh, get along motivation. Uh, you need to become the traffic controller so that you have, help your people perform and they want to perform to be recognized because uh, we want to get ahead in our lives and become the sense maker for your people so that people can create meaning and they understand what's going around them and what place they have in all of that. And uh, below you see uh, some bullet points on what you can do, what behaviors you need to demonstrate to, uh, to do that. So a quick question in the chat, uh, which one do you think is most difficult? Which motivation is more difficult to satisfy? Is it is it the get along, is it the get ahead, or is it the fine meaning? Wow, I, I truly haven't expected such anonymity. Um, while some people say, okay, get ahead, I, I, I see a couple of get, get aheads, in it, but it's, uh, it's, it's finding meaning. And uh, really, 
Wow, this is a fantastic, uh, fantastic out outcome. Uh, you're, you're a beautiful group. You're, you're a beautiful group. Uh, well, I, uh, uh, Juan said, uh, get along and uh, lots of excl exclamation marks. But, uh, but this is true. This is true. And, uh, and, and why does that happen that we don't take enough time uh, to create meaning for our employees, to give them a sense of what's going on? Uh, because right now, when it, when it, when it's uh, total chaos, they, uh, they you don't see the work, you don't see the worker, and uh, when you do connect with them, you tend to uh, fall into this trap of discussing operational issues. Well, you know what? Most likely, your team members are very capable people who know what they're doing. So what they don't have is your vision of where we're going, the sense of direction, uh, the dots being connected. So uh, I, I, I hope that um, the outcomes of today's conversations that, um, uh, that, that we are having would be that you would sit down and think, what can I do to create more meaning? And of course, am I doing a great job in helping my team getting ahead? And do I do enough uh, for them to get along? Because at the end of the day, different people have different uh, levels of these needs. And you really need to understand, and this is where the emotional intelligence and empathy uh, com com comes in. But basically, uh, for your team, you always need to be cognizant. Okay, in my communication, have I addressed all those needs? The tools that we have, do they talk to each one of three? When I send a message, uh, what, what, what am I doing? In the one-on-one, -on -one, uh, what's the proportion of time do I spend on getting along? Is it just three minutes at the beginning or is it actually a more uh, substantial conversation uh, on getting ahead and on finding, and, um, on, uh, finding meaning? And finally, uh, personally, uh, there is this great book, again, um, credit to uh, Drew Watson, uh, who's, uh, who's brought this to, to my attention. Uh, and this is the, uh, the guy who teaches uh, improv theater at Oxford. And uh, he uh, wrote this book, Everything's an Offer. I love the title. Everything's an offer. Even the hardest of the situation, it's an offer. Uh, to learn, to pause, uh, to discover something about yourself, uh, to practice a new skill, to experiment. Um, one of the chapters is called The Dead Don't Improvise. But if you love, you do. So go ahead and improvise. Uh, I hope that you've learned something. You've picked something uh, from today's conversation that you didn't know before. Go ahead and put that into practice. And uh, in in in, in imp Prov, uh, you don't have the sense of certainty. In, in business, we plan in detail, we think of every contingency, we put backup measures in place, and then of course, all of a sudden, it all goes um, upside down and uh, all our plans go out of the window. In improv, you don't plan because everything's an offer. Uh, you live in the moment. And uh, in fact, improvisation is part of life. Our life is improvisation. It's part of every conversation, every meeting, every presentation, every design, every process, every, every strategy. So then everything is an offer. So uh, my offer to you is to take this time to connect. Uh, now you, you, you might be uh, spending a lot of time with your family. You might be having more time to have virtual conversations with friends that you haven't uh, connected with for, uh, for a while. It's also time to focus and understand what are the priorities? Uh, where must you, what are the must win battles and how can you get there? And finally, it's time for reflection. Reflection on who you are, on your strengths, on your weaknesses, on your career aspirations, where you are in your, uh, on, 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 on the S curve of your career and so on. Why those three? Well, because they tap into the get along, get ahead, and find uh, meaning motivation. So in the time of crisis, also don't forget um, of yourself, uh, because leaders who don't take care of themselves in the long run won't be able to take care of others. With that,
I would like to open the floor for questions. I, I think we have five, uh, uh, five, uh, five minutes for, for, for questions, but then if you want to reach out, uh, feel free to connect with me on, um, on the LinkedIn or, or Twitter. Uh, we had a conversation about, uh, about feedback. Actually, feedback is an area of passion for me. I even co-authored a book with, my, uh, with Angela Lane uh, that uh, just um, uh, came out a couple of uh, a couple of months ago. So it's a very practical guide for leaders on uh, on, on on feedback. So um, let's see if we have time to maybe uh, pick up one or two questions. Um, uh, how do we build authentic leadership, and how do we sh uh, share authentic selves? Um, well, I, I think that uh, it all starts with um, telling a story about who you are. Otherwise, uh, how else would people know who is authentic you? Uh, uh, it will require two things, courage and vulnerability. So find the courage in yourself to be vulnerable and tell that story. Uh, share um, stories from your childhood. Uh, uh, an, another exercise that I often run with executives is in a circle, everyone needs to share something unique about their childhood or something that uh, made them the person who they are today. And after they share those stories, uh, the eyes of other others, it's uh, eyes of appreciation and eyes of, oh, now it makes sense. I know why you behave like you do. I still may not appreciate or like uh, your behavior, but I understand you. And it enables people to con connect at, um, uh, at, at, at that level. Um, can you elaborate or share best practices on how to enable entrepreneurship? Wow, so I run a, a, separate, uh, a separate class on entrepreneurship. So let's see if I can uh, squeeze that into, um, uh, into a couple of minutes. So uh, there are three components to that. Uh, entrepreneurship uh, is innovation, taking charge, and giving voice. So entrepreneurs uh, come up with novel ideas. And by novel, I don't mean something out of this world. Uh, as um, one of the famous artists said that uh, good um, artists create, great artists steal. So steal with pride. Uh, so bringing up ideas and uh, uh, those ideas that can really work in that organizational environment. So uh, the second step is essential and that's taking charge. So innovation is not enough. So coming up with ideas and uh, sharing them with others is, is not sufficient. You also need to make sure that uh, uh, you step up, uh, that you get the resources, that you connect the right people, that you socialize um, the, uh, these ideas with others, and you find a way to implement them. And finally, voice. Your ideas need to be known you need to be able to raise your hand uh, in any situation and make sure that uh, there, is, uh, uh, the, 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 there is a process for you to be heard and not being afraid to stand alone and to defend your, your ideas to others. But then again, entrepreneurship is such, such a, a broad topic. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, giving it credit by just uh, answering that, but I, I hope that if you focus on those three areas, um, uh, taking charge, innovation, and, uh, and, and voice, uh, you can uh, start thinking, okay, how am I doing that? Or how my team is doing that and what I could be doing uh, more. All right. Uh, so I, my, 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 my team from, uh, from my sending messages, so gay, you are talking too much. Uh, so it would be great if you could finish. And I, I, I take, uh, I take the cue. I take the cue. Uh, thank you very much. Hey, uh, I, I really appreciate all of you being here. Fantastic turnout. Uh, thank you for your questions, your participation in chats, um, giving your honest answers and following. You know how to find me, how to connect with me. Uh, thank you so much. And, uh, and, and remember, as leaders, you are dealers in hope. Go and take care of, uh, of your teams and take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Thank you. 
Bye-bye.